In today's episode, I'm going to take a look at this, the Artillery X1. Or I guess it's now called the Evnovo X1. They changed their name. Anyway, there's things I like about it and things I don't. And I'll explain it all on today's Film Up Friday. Film Up Friday is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. First off, let me say that this was donated to my channel by Banggood.com to promote their Black Friday sale. They're having a Black Friday sale on this machine for $379, which is a really good price for a big printer. This thing's about the same size as a CR-10S Pro, which is back in the corner over here. And it's very similar to the CR-10 V2. But it's got some features that those don't have. And one is direct drive. Before we get to this, let's talk about the assembly. This upper portion is mostly assembled. The bottom box with the electronics is assembled. So there's just four bolts to connect this upper portion to the bottom portion. And then you have to assemble this spool holder mechanism, put it on here, and then just connect the electrical connectors at different points, and you're pretty much ready to go. Now let's take a closer look at the electronics that control this thing. In order to access the electronics, I gotta break this seal, and it's gonna kill my warranty. Oh well. Here's an overview of how the electronics is laid out inside the box. Plenty of open space. It's got an MKS Gen L version 1.0 board with a AT Mega 2560 8-bit microcontroller. It's got socketed stepper driver boards, which is nice. And they're silent drivers because this thing runs really, really quiet. It's got a separate ARM-based board TFT controller version 1.0. This is the touch screen. This is what it looks like from the front. You have a tools menu, a settings menu, and a print menu. If you click on the settings, these are your options that it shows. If you click on tools, it gives you a whole bunch of different options, including a more function. If you click on more, it gives you this lighting control where you can turn a light on underneath the hot end in white, red, green, blue, or off. It's got a 200 watt power supply, which really isn't that big, so it's 8 amps, but that's because it's got a 110 volt bed, and that's controlled through a solid state relay within the electronics, so it heats up pretty quick. Once I had it assembled, I was ready to test it out, and they give you a sample file on a USB stick. I love this. There does have a micro SD card slot, it does have a USB cable slot, but now it also has a USB stick slot. And this is awesome because it's easy to plug in the computer and run from that. So it just plugs right into the front. Sample file was on it. And this is the sample file. It's just a little cube with their symbol on it. It printed fine. It printed actually pretty quick. It wasn't slow. And the sides of it, not too bad for such a quick print. But then the trouble started. I wanted to pull the filament out of it and print something else. And so I heated it up and I pulled the lever back to remove the filament. And when I pulled the lever back, it broke right in my hand. It just broke in half and the spring went flying. I never did find it. So I was pretty upset because I gotta get this done for a review, for a video. Where am I gonna find a replacement part and how they're gonna send me one from China? Well, it turns out they put extra ones inside their parts kit. This has the tools and everything else you may want, extra cables and two of these brackets, two, which told me they know it's a weak point, so they give you replacements. But then it got worse, because if I'm a beginner, I would be really frustrated. This is a Titan extruder, actually a clone, I believe, and it's not easy to take apart. So I had to take a bunch of screws off, remove everything, try to remember where everything was, because I'm used to Bowden style, I like that better. And then I got the arm off. I had to pull out the PTFE tube. I had to put a, a bearing with a, a little insert, a little rod. So I put together the stronger of the two because they're two different brackets they include. I put together the stronger of the two and then found out it's designed for one bearing to ride on. And this whole assembly is two bearings. And I couldn't get the second bearing out. So I had to take everything off that arm and put it on the second arm, which has the opening similar to this one, which isn't as strong, but it's got an opening to fit the two bearings. So I had to take the PTFE tube, put that other piece on it, and then assemble this thing. So it literally took me about 45 minutes to replace this arm. 
because of all the back and forth. I was pretty frustrated at that point. And I didn't even know if I did everything right because I had gone through so many steps, I was afraid I missed something. Fortunately, I do have extra springs, so I was able to put a spring in here that worked. And then I loaded up my Filament Friday Filament White, and I just ended up printing the same test print again just to give me a same starting point, and they look very similar. So I didn't screw anything up. I was able to reprint the sample print. The next step was to slice for this machine, and it does come with some slicing profile, but I wanted to compare it to my Creality machines, and I wanted to see if I could use the same Cura settings that I use on basically all my machines, but especially my Creality machines. So I tested the threaded rod, one turn of the threaded rod, raised the arm eight millimeters, so it told me I could use my magic numbers and my magic profiles, and that's what I did. So I printed a chep cube, only this time I upsized it 50%, so it's 30 millimeters cubed. And then I printed it at the 0.28 layer height. And, you know, that's never going to give you the most, you know, the best quality. But it's a little rougher than what I would expect, or at least what I would see on my Ender 3 or even my CR10s. So it's a little bit rougher. But dimensionally, you can see that in the X direction and the Y direction, it's almost perfect. Now, I didn't print with a raft. So it's a little bit squished from the bed, but the Z is pretty close for, you know, printing without a wrap. So overall, I'd say accuracy-wise, it did a really, really good job. I wanted to print a couple larger prints, and I wanted a few more of these. These are Ryobi tool mounts. You screw it to the wall, and this is, replaces the battery. So the, the tool just slides right over it like that. The problem I had with these is they fit tight. It's because I got a little bit of over extrusion at different spots on this guy. I didn't see the same thing when I printed it on the CR10S Pro or the CR10. So I definitely don't have the settings right. You know, it's not working with my profile perfectly. It's over extruding a little bit, but only at spots. I'm seeing shifting at spots, real, real minor shifting. Similar to what I saw in the cube, it's just not as crisp. So maybe I need to use their profile. I ran out of time, but clearly my profiles aren't working perfectly on this guy. It's just not as nice as what I'm getting out of my Creality machines. But this is direct drive, and my CR10, CR10S Pro will not print real flexible material unless I put like an EZR extruder on it. So I wanted to see if this would print the really flexible, like Ninja Flex, the real rubbery stuff. So I tried that next. I downloaded this flexible octopus smoothed version by user Nexitech on Thingiverse. I brought it into Cura 4.3. I'm going to use my NinjaFlex profiles, the one that's included with my CHEP profiles, a 0.2 layer height. Now normally I'll print this thicker because I use it for rubber feet, but I'm going to reduce the infill to 10% for this guy. And I'm going to use a crisscross pattern here and on the infill. So this should print easily if this extruder is going to handle this flexible stuff. A lot of times it gets clogged and won't finish, but look at this. It printed it beautifully, and this bed held that Ninja Flex nicely, but it peels right up. Each leg was stuck, so I peeled each one to make sure it was sticking, and then the center of it, I just grabbed that and lifted right off. So it did a fantastic job on this print. I'm really impressed with how good it printed this flexible material. There you have it, right out of the box, you can print really flexible stuff with this without modification. That's a nice advantage this has over the CR10. Overall, this machine has worked pretty good other than that broken arm, but one area that concerns me long term is they use ribbon cable to run the power to the hot end. Now typically, this ribbon cable is used to route into tight spots or to bend, but be stationary. The connectors are what fail. And especially the fact that these are going to be flexing, your weak points are the connector here and the connector here. And it's because ribbon cable is not designed to handle high current. So in order to handle the current going through the hot end, they've got to run that current through multiple traces to share the load. And so you've got multiple points here that if you get a bad connection, the other traces have to carry more load than it was designed to do. So let's say they've got current going through four traces and you get a bad connection on one of these pins. Now that current's got to go through three traces. So it's going to be even hotter. 
and eventually they fail and it's down to two trays. And that's why they give you extra ribbon cable in the pack. But what will happen is the connector will go bad too. So you're going to get intermittent connections, you're going to get a bad print, and it's all because of these connectors. They're not designed to be moving like these are going to be. So that long term to me is not a great design. I would rather have a wire that if I have a bad connection, I can replace the connector. Or if I have a broken wire, I can just resolder or put a new wire in place. This is just, to me, not reliable. We'll see maybe a year or two down the road how many people had to replace their connectors and the cable on their artillery X1. If you're looking to get a big machine and you want direct drive to print flexibles, this may be the machine for you. You'll just know that you may have issues with these connectors down the road. I hope I'm wrong. Me personally, I like a Bowden style, so I prefer the CR10 setup, but for $379, this is a pretty good deal. So I would grab one if you're interested on that Black Friday deal. But overall, not bad. Just don't pull the lever too hard.